for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. And today we are joined by Pablo Eichel of the SNJ CGT, that's the National Union of Journalists in France. And we are going to be talking about the controversial global security bill around which protests have been taking place across the country for over two weeks, almost three weeks now. And we have had protests taking place almost every weekend. A lot of controversial provisions in this bill, which give greater power to law enforcement, which are a great danger to civil liberties. And journalists have been in the forefront of leading many of these protests. Thank you so much, Pablo, for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. So my first question would be, could you maybe first take us through some of the more uh, controversial or dangerous provisions in the bill that the protesters have been highlighting? Yes, in, in, in this moment, we are uh, especially fighting against three articles, uh, 21, 22, and 24. In this bill, um, the, the coalition of uh, journalists, uh, unions, and uh, NGOs of uh, uh, human rights uh, are focusing especially on these uh, three articles and also in the SNMO, the, who is the national scheme of uh, maintain of order, is how the police work in during protest. So articles 21, 22, and 24, why those ones? 24, I start with 24 because everybody's talking about this one. Uh, it's an article who says that you cannot um, broadcast, you cannot uh, broadcast the face of policemen people while they are working because this can be used uh, against these policemen. And we all know, journalists know that it's a principle that you, you can have to uh, film and broadcast uh, policemen during their work, especially during protests, because that's the only way you have to see if they are doing well or doing wrong. And that's uh, our journalist uh, work. So that's what why we are focused on, on 24. Then there is 21 and 22 who are very interesting too, because um, 21 allows policemen to have cameras uh, food cameras and to broadcast what they uh, film with these cameras to use it in, in, in the visual speech of the police, for example. And Article 22 says they can use drones. They can use drones to, to film uh, any protest and to use also these uh, images. Um, so when, when you see those three articles, you see that police want to have their own images and they want to put out uh, journalist images. So right. they want to take uh, in control the, um, the way they can uh, say what's, what's going on in any protest. And uh, that's why journalists together and, and movie makers, documentary makers, and uh, young uh, street reporters say all of this is not a good thing because you want to take uh, in your hands the, the narrative, the visual narrative of any protest. Then the SNMO, the scheme, national scheme of uh, maintain of order, um, also uh, allows police to, to, to stop uh, the people detain the people, and then after a, a, a judge can see. Well, that's uh, mainly in the, the whole law. CGT, the union where I belong, is against the whole law. But the coalition of many unions, associations, NGO are mainly focused on these three articles and SNMO. Why? Because the, the rest of the law is uh, focused more in. Um, uh, giving more, more power to local police, for example, um, to share some issues with local policies. And you know that France has been in a, a situation of terrorism attacks uh, these uh, past uh, few months and few years. So there are people that agree with this kind of uh, law and other people that say it's, it's, it's not... Uh, fine to share the power of national police with local police, the better thing is to have a, a stronger and bigger national police. Absolutely. 
Right. So in this context, also wanted to uh, talk about the kind of thinking that is taking place in or the announcements made by the government regarding these laws. So what are the arguments that they're using to justify these kind of measures? Of course, you mentioned the context in which these laws were introduced, but specifically some of these more problematic provisions. I know that the government has said that they will consider rewriting of 24, but how, how have they been justifying these uh, laws? I think the the biggest uh, justification is about the security of the policemen, but for for us it's not a good justification because um, I know policemen have been attacked uh, even in their home during their private life, but they haven't been attacked because of the images that journalists have made during protest. They have been attacked for other reasons. There, there have been uh, other ways that terrorists uh, found the addresses of this or that uh, policemen. So the, the justifi this justification uh, doesn't, doesn't stand. And that's one. And, and the other one is, is the social media. In, in social media, there is such a fight. There is such a um, uh, harassment uh, between several camps and uh, for example uh, union of police attack uh, uh, journalists in in social media uh, very often and uh, we try to defend ourselves but we don't strike back because we think that uh, police unions have to do their job um, but i think social media is especially twitter uh, it's it's a place where people are, are arguing and insulting a lot, uh, especially uh, with um, anonymous accounts. Um, and policemen are asking for help there. And government is saying, this will help you. And for us, it's not true. That <laughs> would not help in, in, in that issue. Absolutely, right. And But there's also, I think, a longer... Uh, or especially over the past few years, Emmanuel Macron's government has been introducing a series of, yeah, in fact, after the Yellow West protest took place as well, there were similar measures that were introduced. So there's also a sort of surveillance state uh, apparatus that is being strengthened all the more as time passed, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. In, in, in the last two years, uh, we have uh, been seeing a lot of new kind of journalism with uh, young street journalists who broadcast on YouTube, on different uh, social media, uh, covering especially uh, uh, Yellow Vest uh, protests, for example. And in that moment, uh, Union of Journalists ask government uh, to put clear rules for policemen to treat journalists during that kind of protest. And they didn't listen a lot. At, uh, and this year, they issued this uh, national scheme of uh, maintain of order, who gives policemen a lot of uh, power, a lot of um, advantage to to take over journalists. But it, it's true that uh, since uh, November 2018, and during all the year 2019, uh, we have had a lot of uh, aggressions of policemen against a journalist that uh, our union uh, have uh, shown uh, with EFJ, European Federation of Journalists, on, a, on the platform, platform uh, for the protection of journalists uh, at the Council of Europe. We see in 2019 that France has grown up in, in, in the position of uh, countries where the relationship between police and, and journalists is not going well. And in 2020, this has continued. And this law is, uh, again, another step in this, uh, how, how you said, uh, security uh, state, uh, a police state where, where police has a lot more power. We also say in France, it's kind of minority report state. It looks like the movie Minority Report. They want to have the power, the decision, the power of uh, broadcast the, the visual narrative. And, and that's not fair and that's not human rights. 
Absolutely. And this context also wanted to ask you about the organizing that is taking place among journalists. So we know that across the world, of course, journalists are facing a large number of attacks. It has, in fact, in, much increased across the world in recent times. At the same time, we also see that uh, organizing among journalists has become far more difficult because the nature of work, uh, say, unionizing is much, much more difficult. The news industry itself is in a is in a state of crisis. So could you maybe take us through what is the kind of uh, organizing that has been happening, especially since these laws came into being? How are uh, young journalists, how are journalists in the new media, for instance, joining these protests and uh, issues like that? Yes, this, these are challenging times for unionizing because unions uh, used to be uh, the traditional uh, union of workers of traditional media who work in company, uh, in media or not media, but always uh, the, the main unions like CGT, for example, are uh, very old uh, institutions. Uh, CGT is 125 years old. <laughs> and um, the, the, the work has been changing with the computer, with digitalization and with the new media. And uh, we have been working a lot in 2019 uh, about new ways of uh, unionizing. We have been working with people from, from England, from UK, Unions 21. We have been working with EFJ. We have been working a lot, even with uh, actors, um, technicians, musicians, because the, the, this challenge of uh, unionizing uh, young people and uh, also uh, with new tools, it's very uh, challenging, it's very interesting. And um, when there are protests like this, uh, people want to have um, common grounds to fight for and uh, want, want to have also, um, I don't want to say leaders to follow, but uh, at least uh, strong people that can organized a protest, for example. And that's where all unions have shown that they are uh, strong and they are um, they have the equipment. Uh, the, the first um, meeting we have uh, three weeks ago, the, the four main unions and one NGO call everybody and said, okay, we can organize a meeting if this uh, uh, disturb you, you come, we organize one, one letter and we, we take the track and the sound and everything. And, and we were a few hundreds. And then with internet and Facebook and everything, more people join. All the, a lot of journalists on the mainstream media, but also young journalists in uh, street reporters. Uh, and then we were, the, the, the week after, we were 15,000. Uh, and that's where our union CGT, for example, give um, logistic support. And that's interesting where people are uh, talking together. And, and then the, the week uh, after we were 2,100, uh, 200,000, sorry, uh, in Paris. And uh, well, now we are preparing a letter to President uh, Macron. Absolutely. And this context, just wanted to quickly ask you, what about the next coming couple of weeks? What is the kind of broad plan that the unions have regarding the protests? Well, um, I can't say everything about the plan, but uh, the first thing, this weekend, uh, we are sending a letter to President Macron. This is a, a scoop for you because nobody knows yet in, in France. It, it will be issued normally uh, tomorrow, Sunday. Um, when well, then after next week, uh, there is holidays, Christmas holidays, and the situation with the with pandemic uh, coronavirus is, is uh, not easy in France too. So we are slowing down maybe protests and preparing more uh, intellectual actions, if we may say. Um, the, the bill will go to the Senate uh, after. So we are taking already um, contact, rendezvous, uh, with the senators uh, in January. And also, it's very important for us to show uh, that there have already been people uh, that have been um, killed or harassed by police uh, unfairly 
so there are groups of a family of victims and there is especially one one person Cédric Chouvia what uh, who was um, um, strangled uh, last year on 3 of January of this year so the the 3rd of January uh, will be the first protest for the the first anniversary of the of the death of uh, Cédric Chouvia that's our next steps right absolutely thank you so much pablo for talking to us thank to you thank you that's all we have time for today keep watching people's dispatch <laughs>